We are recording, I believe. Okay, we're recording, so let me make sure. Um, we're just gonna be going over the new contracts this morning, um, just some things to get ready for this upcoming um, new contracts. Um, they can start getting those ready now if they have everything already, um, the information for the upcoming year, for the fiscal year. Um, and they can activate those because they won't get pulled in um, with the start, start and stop dates that they have entered. Um, so the first thing we're going to be going over is on the new contracts is kind of the things what to get ready for. Um, the one thing would be your job calendars. So you want to make sure you have your job calendars set up for the next coming year or fiscal year. Um, again, um, utilize uh, the rate of creating one calendar for that upcoming fiscal year. Um, maybe districts might have to create a few if you have multiple different kind of calendars. Um, if you don't want to use just one and copy them to all the other ones, again, so the district is can utilize this um, as many calendars as they want to create. And then once they create that, then they can go to the copy feature and you pull that one calendar that they created and then use and enter those that start and end dates. And then they can go ahead and um, select as many as they want to create those upcoming fiscal year. So they don't have to use create and create 20 different job calendars. They can just use this copy feature to utilize that. Um, and then also the other thing they wanna make sure um, that they do is make sure they have a default calendar. Um, make sure they don't um, copy their default calendar into that one they just created with job with the workdays, um, cause yeah, they can create some havoc then, especially with ODGFS. So that was one thing that I wanted to mention to make sure that you have um, your job calendar set up correctly for the upcoming year. Um, again, um, you can use the reports and the job calendar. Then once you do do that, to make sure all your job calendars are correct, and you can verify that by running the report and you can run it by one um, job calendar or if you leave it blank, no thing selected, it will pull in everything. Okay, so just a reminder on that, that that's out there for their use. Um, the one other thing I just kind of wanted to mention, I won't get too much in is the EMIS. So if like, if you're starting, you're gonna activate your new contracts for this upcoming year and you do this early and you still haven't finished your final L collection, um, you should be okay as long as those contract start and stop dates are not included in that um, this previous current fiscal year. So as long as your configuration um, is still set with your um, this upcoming this fiscal year 23. And where's the words I add? I never find it. There it is, sorry. And then as long as that is set to the correct fiscal year, they won't blend. Of course, and my, my data is really old. Um, so I tried to update as best as I could. Obviously, I still have a really old date. So fiscal year 23, so let's go ahead and change that. So is it, as long as those, your fiscal year date uh, for the um, final L collection is still at 2023 and you activate the new contracts now um, for this next fiscal year of 24, um, you'll be okay. Now, if they notice when they're doing the final uh, collection and some of those new contracts are getting pulled in, they can go ahead and unmark those report to um, EMIS and uncheck those so they don't pull into that final L uh, collection, but they shouldn't because your start and stop dates are going to be for the upcoming um, school year, which is July and after. So, so just a reminder on that, that they should be okay on that. Um, the next thing for districts to consider would be supplemental coaches. I know we have a lot of question on those about supplemental coaches, um, how they should be paid and how they should be set up. Um, one thing, we have two different options that districts can do that we've been suggesting. And one of them would be setting them up as a non-contract type. And they want to attach it to a job calendar that has no work days. So like a default calendar. They can set up a, a calendar just specific for these um, coaches. And then at every year, and then at the end, they can go ahead and use core adjustments 
and then they can um, enter in how many SERS retirement days that they need or hours. And then they can do that here by under core and then just go ahead and do the SERS retirements or SERS days. And one, so they can do the total. And what you also wanna remember then, you, they wanna make sure for the position type, um, they wanna be set up as a supplemental. So that way when they do run the SERS pay report, they're not getting pulled in as accrued wages or 04, the earnings code will be an 02. And this will allow them then to go to core adjustments and add these days and they will show on the search report then at that time. Because we had a lot of um, districts that were pulling them in as they were getting on, um, well, compensation, as I say, stretch pay when you get to that point um, that they were pulling in as an 04. So a lot of problems, we couldn't get the days on there and they would have to go to e and do the adjustment on that end and change some things. So if they can start thinking about it now, then they won't have that problem when SERS when they run their service report, retirement reports. The other option that districts can do is use the contract compensation and they wanna point it to a job calendar with days on it. So, um, and on check the stretch pay box. So if they're on a compensation on stretch box, on, on check that box, they still will pull in because they're on a job calendar. If it's inclusive, if you're paid that you're paying them. Um, and then what they can do, um, if they once they pull them in, if they need to change the amount, it's not the right amount or unit amount, they can modify that at that time if they want to. And again, they want to make sure they set these um, certain employees up as supplemental. And then that will allow them to be the earnings code of two. Now, if they had us, if what we were finding, if they had that stretch pay box um, checked and they were doing that, it was all going to accrued. So um, we, we kind of figured out that that was the problem that we need to un, un check the stretch box and make sure it's pointing to a job calendar and they will pull in if it's inclusive of your beginning and end dates of your payroll. So again, they have um, a couple of different options there that they can do. Oh, more, okay. One other thing I kind of wanted to go through is our new contract checklist. And that is, oh, is that up? right down here. And I kind of just wanted to check, let you know that this is out here on our documentation and that is under our appendix and under checklist and then the new check contract checklist. So they can use this as a, just to check off to make sure they're not forgetting anything when they are doing their new contracts. And this actually is kind of what I'm going off of today. Um, you know, setting up your job calendars and then processing the new contracts, make sure your start and stop dates are entered using import new contracts. Um, the new contract reports that are out there for your use when you're balancing to make sure everything is correct before you activate them. And then also setting up your non-contracts. And then of course, like I said, activating them. So again, they can utilize this um, checklist and um, to use and print off and they can make sure that they're not forgetting anything for this upcoming fiscal year. Okay. so. Once you get everything ready um, and you have, um, you know, what you're going to do for your new contracts, um, then we'll go to payroll or processing and new contracts. Okay. So the first thing would be um, under new contract maintenance. This would be where if you needed to add just one employee or a couple employees, if you don't want to do the mass copy, um, you can utilize this feature. Um, and also, um, once you do the mass copy or the import, all your contracts will show under here and then once you move them over. So, um, if the, and to remember, if the compensation is archived, um, it will not be in new contracts. So, just a reminder of that. So, I'm going to go ahead and just add one employee. And also, you want to remember, um, to make sure you select the correct contract. If they're not archived yet, they're gonna show under here. 
So I have two compensations, but I know I want my fiscal 23 because I'm going to make the make this into my fiscal year 24, what I'm going to work off of. And then you want to make sure you have your new contract and then your contract start date. So if you know what your contract start and stop dates are, um, you want to make sure that you enter those in. So my next, for my next year, I'm just going to start on my 2023. And it's going to go to my 3124. And I'm going to go ahead and create those. So then from here, um, you can go ahead and start entering your information. You can change your job calendars at this time. Um, it will remove your contract days work from the old contract and then update it for the new work days if you're on a calendar with job with work days. Um, I entered in my contract start and stop date that I entered. Again, you can go ahead and make sure um, your new contract amount is entered. So I'll just update that. Make sure your new pays on contract are correct. And now so you can do your calculate button. And you can make sure that everything updated to the new pay per period, what it should be. And also you can go ahead at this time um, to add payroll accounts. If, if an employee has to change your payroll accounts, you can do that here under the payroll accounts and update that to the correct one. Now, if they do this, it's going to mark the other uh, payroll accounts that he has as non-active. So just a reminder on that, that those are gonna um, change those other payroll accounts to non-active and they won't be used. It's gonna use what you're selecting here under the payroll accounts. But again, they don't need to add this. If they're not changing anything, they don't need to change those old pay, um, the old compensation payroll accounts and just leave them as is if they're not doing any changing. I know some districts don't like this feature because like I said, it does change those other ones to non-active. Um, so again, if they don't like to use this feature, they can add those and update those once they activate the contracts and change it on um, under payroll accounts for that employee. And then the other ones will stay active then. Okay, Just make sure I'm going to my checklist here. Okay. So then I will go ahead and um, save it. And now my new contract is here. And then I wanna go ahead and you have that option to delete it or edit if you need to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. And then once you do that, um, are you sure it just gives you a little um, note just to say, are you sure you wanna do this? And then what it's just gonna do is transfer that primary compensation flag that you see under compensations and it's gonna mark this new one and uncheck the other one. Now, if you use that, if you don't use it, you can uncheck it. If you don't use that, that's okay. So now if I go under my compensations, Moody. Then I have my new compensation um, is under there. And one thing I did forget to tell you, um, I forgot, sorry about that, is the change the label, which I will do when we do the um, mass copy and the import, but um, you can change that um, under new contracts. I did forget to mention that, sorry about that. But if you use that label, which is very important when you're using futures, so you know which compensation you're grabbing, um, to change it to your new compensation. Now, again, I'm just using fiscal year 24, so I know that that's my new um, contracts for this upcoming year is the label, and then I can say that. So now I know I have um, this new contract in there for this upcoming year. Okay. The next one would be your mass copy. Now the mass copy, you have um, the option to pull in um, hundreds of employees if you're big districts at one time and you don't have to pull them in one by one. 
So you can um, bring them in by your pay groups. You can bring them in only active employees, um, job status, excuse me, inactive or active and inactive. I'm just gonna keep them as active because I only wanna pull in my active employees at this time. You also have the option to pull in include, oh, sorry, I saw Heidi just had a question. Um, when creating a new one, when creating a new one, like do you suggest using the clear option first prior to entering new information? Sorry, Andrea, I sent that question in when you were creating from the copy feature, a brand new one. So sorry, that's been sitting there for a little bit and it's okay. I'm sorry, yep, I didn't see that, I'm sorry. Which one, on the job calendars are you saying or on no, where? Honey, back in, right there in new contract area, when you go back to maintenance and you do okay. copy. Sure. Yep, when you do the copy feature, cause I'm not seeing on the documentation where it talks about that clear field, but we've been using it out of habit. So go ahead and add your employee here. It's not until you okay. actually bring them in. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see that earlier. It just happened to glance over. Like that. And I'll just add, enter a date real quick. So oh, see you the, this. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. They're the new contract fields. Gotcha. Yeah. They can use that also if they want to. Um, if they want to make sure that all those fields are clear um, before they start, they can do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we just related that back to classic, you know, when you did the clear and classic, because sometimes it got rid of some junk, especially if they had a mid year change. So, mid year change, correct. Yep. Sorry about that. Yep. I didn't even think about the clear option there. So, thank you. No, no, that, that's okay. We wanted to make sure it was still valid. Thank you, dear. Yep. It's still valid. Yep. You can use that as the clear of um, if you don't want, um, like you said, any other options in there at that time. And then you can start building it from there. Can I ask what that does clear? Does it say that in the documentation what it actually clears? Um, you know, I'm not certain if it does or not. That's okay. I just want to. I, I will have to double check exactly um, what that because I don't think it does. Actually, I don't think we even have that in there. So I will make sure. I'm gonna write a note for that. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with Heidi on classic. We always use the clear when we're doing the type new contract so that it wiped. The amount paid, the accrued wage, you know, wiped everything off the screen, the earnings, the um, everything, and you started with a blank slate. Yeah, because I saw that the FY22 was still in there. I was just wondering, is there like a specific? <laughs> Thank you. Let's check here. I have a couple of them out there. See. And if we do clear, it clears like the contract amounts, it looks like. Um, it doesn't clear the description or anything um, from what I can see. So it just clears the, I saw it clear that out. So I will, what I'll do is after this, I'll run tests and then I'll put that in the documentation of what, when you click on the clear, exactly what that is um, updating. Thanks. You're welcome. That will be helpful. Okay. Okay, so she said, so if I calculate, I don't have anything in here. Let's see. Let's try that. and calculate, and then it calculates that. And if I click clear, no, it just starts it all over. So what it's calculating. Okay, so I will make sure I add something in the documentation on that if we don't already have that. So, all right, thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate that. Okay, um, any other questions? Okay. We're all set. So we'll go back to mass copy. Um, then what we want to do, um, this you can select, like I said, um, including archive compensations. You can include archive employees if you want to. I'm not sure 
why they would want to do that, but that we all have that option or if they have to. And then um, also select by pay groups. So if I'm going to select my one pay group of Violet, and as you can see, I have a lot of different dates in here yet. Um, and I want to make sure I only include, let's just include these compensation act updates. I want to include everybody that is from 8-14-22 on. So I'm going to put my date in as 8-15-2022. So now it pulled in just those employees that I want to show in my spreadsheet to have that date of 8-15-22 to 6 one because I'm going to build my new contracts for fiscal year 24. So you can include compensation active as you can use that. You don't have to, but you can if you just want to um, get those employees that you just need in the spreadsheet. <clears throat> okay. So then you can enter in your new um, start and stop dates here at this time. Um, I did was testing before we started. And if you leave a blank, um, I notice what it does. It takes, it puts the previous, it looks at the previous stop date of this contract here and it enters in the day before. Um, Cause I was kind of testing it, what would happen if you just leave them blank. And it would, it entered my, um, my last day of the stop date. Um, because that was my last day of my contract or on my work days on my calendar. So that's kind of what it was looking at when I was um, leaving those blank. That's what the, um, the stop date, start date was starting as. So I'm going to go and enter in start date. And then I want it to be, so what your calendar um, for these employees will be. You can enter your contract start and stop date at this time. Um, if you already have your count for what, how many employees are going to be in this pay group that have to have new contracts built, you can do that here um, and make sure you have your count right. And then I'm going to go ahead and build new contracts. And again, um, I didn't get any errors. I have all my 79 were copied over. And then they copy over into the new contract maintenance. Okay. So now you have your contracts. And then from here, um, you can go ahead and start um, selecting employees and updating them. Um, one by one to update what the new contract amount is. I'm a, I'm supposed I'm I'm thinking everybody um, districts are probably utilizing the import um, feature of new contract because you can do that all in a spreadsheet, import them in, and then it's all done, and then you just activate them. But if your districts don't utilize the import um, spreadsheet, then you can go ahead and um, update them one by one on here, and update what you need um, to do. And again, you, like they said, you can use that clear button and that um, new, new paper period, everything gets um, removed. The unit amount somebody had just put on there, that, those, that was another one that it gets cleared. And then um, they can go ahead and start entering their new contract information. I'm just gonna do calculate. All right, so you just want to make sure your start and stop dates are correct. And then go ahead and save it. Um, one other thing that um, they will have to use if you're wanting, like, um, maybe some of these contracts um, don't are not reported to EMIS or something. Um, they will have to use the EMAS change procedure to change those, and they can do that right here and new contract and update that feature. And we do have that out there um, under our documentation to um, 
the new contract report flag. So they can update that to be true or false um, if they need to. So they can do that right here. So they can change this to false or to true, excuse me, and then act, execute that. And that would change them all in here before you activate your contracts. Um, one other thing you can do here is the new label. You can use mass change to change all these employees. Let me get out of here. Their definition. There we go. And what you can do is use the new label and then check for label. Ah. He's going to find it. There it is. New compensation label. So we'll update this, all these right here to your upcoming new fiscal year. And you wanna put it in quotes. And then you can go ahead and execute that. Tells you how many are going to be changed. And that was my 79 that I had prior and submit the change. And now the new label is changed before I activate them. Okay. And again, what that label is used for, I just kind of want to show you here. If you go to future and you create one, you're going to see, let me bring an employee. Right here, you're going to see this. The teacher is coming from your position record of the employee, the position description, and then the fiscal year 24, like I just changed, is coming from your compensation label. So that is where those two are coming from when you see those. Now, when you do just current, you're not gonna see that fiscal year. Let's do this. You're only gonna see the description, which is coming from the position. So current and future are a little different. Um, we may have a feedback issue on there to add that new label and their position, just so it could be helpful for districts to make sure they're pulling in the right one. But I just wanted to show what the difference between the current and future, what it's showing when you're actually pulling in them for payroll. Okay. Okay, so once you have all your teachers updated for this upcoming um, fiscal year that needs to be changed, then you can utilize the um, main activate. You can click on this, select everybody and activate. Okay. <laughs> Um, I also, I just want to mention if you are a huge, if you're, you have, if your districts are huge and they have thousands of employees and they're activating, they got to remember when they're activating, they can only select a thousand at a time. Um, it won't um, activate more than that at a time. So just a reminder on that, that they, um, that not all of them will activate. If they select them all and they have 2000 selected, they can only do a thousand at a time. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and activate these. And again, you have that option, um, 79 contracts, and you can transfer that primary position flag at this time. And then you do get um, a message if there are some issues or warnings um, on that that you can pay attention to on that. If we go back to compensations then, and contract compensations. Oh, um, Heidi has a question. I have a question on stop dates before you push through. Okay, go ahead, Heidi. Hey, sorry about that, Andrea. No problem. Um, I noticed, and we just want clarification because we've been teaching it one way, so we just want to make sure you had teachers there that were starting mid-August this year, and we're just talking about stop dates. Like we understand that the start date has to be inclusive of the pay period mm -hmm. uh, to get brought in on those. Correct. Stop dates, um, I noticed on your teachers, and maybe it was just a date you were using just to push them through, 
We know that that has to include the last day on the calendar, obviously. However, we were under the impression, and maybe that has changed, that um, that stop date also has to be included on the last pay for contract yes. pay period. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, it I does. just want to make sure because you were using yeah, that them. hasn't changed. Okay, good deal. I just want to make sure. Oh, maybe something's changed and I missed it. Okay. Nope. We're good. Um, nope. Teachers, um, if they're working through the summer, then they're going to have to make sure that they include those dates into their, you know, what four pays August in, into okay. August. Now, okay. if they're just um, maybe secretaries that don't work during the summer or school drivers, school bus drivers, again, it's it, their yeah, their stop date's going to be different. Um, Sweet. Okay. If they don't have, if they don't get paid over the cooled months, if they're just getting paid or maybe um, um, treasures that work the full year, you okay, know, then they deal. would have. Yeah. So nope, That's that has awesome. not changed. Yep. Okay. Good deal. Thanks, Andrea. Sorry. You're for welcome. The yep. And then I just want to go back to my compensations. And then you want to go ahead and do. And you can search for all those new ones that you just pulled in. Well, maybe not. There. Oh, okay. What happened here? Where did my contract conversations go? Did I put fiscal year 23 and not fiscal 24? Maybe that's what I did. Oh, you know what? I'm using the description and not label. Sorry about that. Ah, looking for my label. Where are you? Oh, there it is. So why am I not seeing it? Oh, we're here. Sorry. I was in the wrong column. Okay, here we go. I'm like, where is it? So I can go ahead and make sure that I my Contracts that um, are look correct on under my compensation and make sure they're all there. And you also can run a report if you need to, just to double check that everybody um, is there according to uh, the spreadsheet that uh, your districts might keep to make sure that they're um, showing correctly and nobody was missed on that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Any questions on the mass copy of the new contracts? Okay. Um, the next thing we will be going over is just the importing of new contracts. So again, um, there are four fields that are required when you're going through um, your new contracts. And I'll go here to our documentation. Um, you need to have your employee ID, job number, contract type, and then the new compensation label. And again, this is only required if your districts use have more than one compensation for a position, which probably most of them do now since they've been on re redesign for quite a while. So um, that compensation label is going to be very important. Okay. And then um, down here, we just want to, I just want to show you, this is where your fields would be um, for your heading names of your new contract. And then, and we have it in black here, which are highlighted, um, which in the black that need to be in the spreadsheet. And again, you just want to make sure that um, to pay attention to um, the, the header fields and make sure these are correct because some of them are uppercase and lowercase. And if they're off by just one, it can really throw your spreadsheet off and cause errors. And, and making sure that your data that your input are all case sensitive. So I just want to remember on that. So here in our documentation, we do have a new contract compensation worksheet that the districts can use to start to pull in all those employees that they need um, and update it right in, the, in that CSE report. 
Now I already um, moved over my report or, and saved it under my reports. And I have my new contract compensation worksheet ready to go here. So we'll go ahead and open that. Now, again, if your district wants to utilize more of the configuration filters, they can add to this if they want. And um, so they can bring in different compensation, maybe by label, if they want to do that. They can um, add the label here and bring in those employees that were only fiscal year 24, you know, or fiscal year 23, excuse me. Again, they can change this and save that to they want and just save it under their reports as a favorite and update the name um, of their worksheet. So this is just a starter worksheet that they can use and um, change it as for their needs. Um, it does save it in Excel data spreadsheet. So there's fewer updates you have to do to the column headers, but there is some that we'll have to do. The query options, um, you can go ahead and enter your dates of the contracts that you want to pull in. And this is going to be looking at your um, the current compensations that are out there now. So I'm going to pull in my employees that have these start, start and stop dates. Again, these are probably going to be different for your different employees. Like um, I just said, you're going to have your teachers, you're going to have your um, treasurers who work um, maybe all year. Um, your secretary. So again, it just depends what your compensation start and stop dates are. So you just, again, have to remember um, of those dates. And again, um, you can pull it in by pay group. I'm just going to go ahead and pull in my pay group one, because this is what my compensation start and stop dates are for. And then I'm going to go ahead and generate that. And hopefully I get something. I do. Okay. Okay, so now I have my compensation report. And then here, this is where the districts can utilize and start. Um, they can go ahead and figure through, find out um, which ones do they wanna pull in. Maybe they wanna delete people out of this. They don't need them anymore. Like here I have these employees down here. Maybe I don't need them. So they can sort the spreadsheet to however they want and remove those employees that they don't need. And they can just do that by highlighting the spreadsheet and deleting. So I got those removed. So again, they can go through, change all those employees that they need to be changed. Um, if they have their um, if they have their own spreadsheet of what their new figures will be, they can sort it by the last name and they can go through each employee then for this pay group and start entering that new information in. So um, one thing to remember is the contract type has to be changed before you import, import that in. So we're gonna change that to a four or new contract. So I'm just gonna change it to four because that means new contract. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste that down. and paste in. So now my contract type is all um, my four, which means new contracts. So when I import them in, the system knows that these are all new contracts. And the next thing you can do right here is change it over to your compensation label for this upcoming year. So I'm gonna change that to a four and I'm gonna copy that. And now I have all those ready to go um, and changed in my spreadsheet. And again, you can do that for the description. If you use the description, if you change, if their districts change that description, they can do that here also. A lot of them probably just have it whatever their um, like secretary or bus driver, they probably have it as that. But again, it's up to the district um, what, how, what they want to do with um, on changing that. The other thing to remember is the compensation label. When you pull that spreadsheet in, that the header is wrong. So you want to make sure you change that to new, lowercase, like I said, very case sensitive, and a capital C. 
And again, we have that in our documentation to make sure that you change that. And let's see. Right here. So you want to make sure you change. And then right here, we also have um, what needs to be changed. So the contract type has to be four. You want to make sure if you have true and false in your spreadsheet, you want to make sure they change that to a capital yes or no. Capital Y or N, excuse me. So in my spreadsheet, I do have a column that has false. So I need to change that. Actually, this is an older one because I just noticed we do not have that unit amount manual calculation mode anymore. So I want to make note because that is outdated. On our, our documentation. So I will update that and replace that. So I'm just going to delete that out. And there's that one too. Those should not be in there. So I'm going to change that. Because I thought we had changed it, but obviously we did not. So, and then the other thing we want to make sure we um, update is the equal pays flag. So that would be yes, because that's for true and false. And paste. So I want to make sure that everything else looks good. Also, the other thing then, your contract start and stop date has to be changed. Again, you can utilize the um, change one line and then um, change that. I'm just going, again, your contract start and stop dates will be different for whatever pay group that you're working on at this time. So I'm just going to go ahead and just change it to my next coming year. And you want to make sure that your um, whatever your contract stop date is, your contract start date will be the day after that. And then um, I'll just say this is just people that are done at the end of the year and they don't work during the summer. So I'll just put 31 2024. I'm going to copy that down. and paste that. Same thing goes for my contract. And paste. Okay. So now um, the only that was the, really the only uh, header that needed to be changed was that new compensation um, in that change. Um, then after you have all your manual changes done, you updated all your um, paper period or the unit amount, excuse me, the obligation. Um, and then you can go ahead and save that. You wanna make sure that you save it as a CSV. Let's go find where my CSV is, there it is. And I'm just gonna save it here on my desktop. Okay, so now once you got all that done and saved, you can go ahead and go to processing new contracts and go under import. You wanna choose your, your CSV that you saved. Oh, that's not the right one. Make sure you have the right one. And then you can go ahead and enter, um, Let's see, make sure to where I'm at in my notes here. Okay. Then you can go ahead and import the contract. Um, if you have multiple, um, if you wanna enter a date, you can do that, you don't need to. If you wanna import everything that's on the spreadsheet, you can go ahead and just click on import and it will import everything that's on your spreadsheet. And I did got no errors, so that's a good thing. <laughs> and then what that does is take it over to new contract maintenance. And then here's my, everything that was in my import. 
Um, once it's here, you we have a couple of different report options that you can run. Um, if if changing, um, you can check their payroll accounts and what what is currently the, the what the um, currently what the payroll accounts are for each employee under this. So if you go to SSDT new contract payroll accounts, you can see um, those out here. So if you go ahead and click, that is correct. If you enter the contract stop date, then it should pull in only what is in, um, only on the spreadsheet with that date. It should. You're welcome. Okay. And then the next thing, um, you, if you generate the report, Then they can also do a double check here before they activate them. They can make sure that everything looks correct and it's going into the correct account if need be. The other thing that we have that you can use is the new contract summer report under SSDT. And then this contract, this report just shows a summary of the employees. So they can go ahead and go through each one, make sure that the contract obligation, the days are correct, hours, um, if they're stretch pay, their pay per period, um, another check um, to make sure. And it also calculates it at the grand total at the bottom. So if they have a spreadsheet that they have on their own and they can make sure that matches to what they have for that pay period. Hey, Andrea, I'm sorry, I missed it. Is it is that a report that can be done by pay group or is that something we would have to modify? You would probably have to modify that, yes. Okay, thanks. So if you go under report and then go here, you can add that. Let's see thanks. Like. Then you go to configuration filter and add your pay group. That's definitely, and again, like I said, districts can utilize these and change them and then save them as one of their favorite reports and they can keep those in their, um, in the report section. Very good question, thank you. Thanks. The other option we have out there is under reports and new contract report. And this they can, um, will show, um, Everything that's a new contract that they that is um, under maintenance, excuse me. So again, they can sort it by employee number, employee name, pay group. If they have multiple pay groups in in this um, in your new contract maintenance, they can pull them in as pay group if you um, want to see that. You can do includes of subtotal by the sort option. You also can bring in the contract start date of the uh, certain ones in the in the report. If you only want to pull in, like I said, if you have multiple pay groups with different contract start dates, you can actually pull those in here um, into that um, report. Or you can pull in employees if you're doing certified and classified in the new contract maintenance. You can pull them in, pull in all your certified, check those, run another report, pull in all your classified, check that to make sure that balances for your classified. Or you can pull in by selected job calendars and also pay groups. So right now the default is set to pull in all pay groups. So again, if you don't want certain pay groups, um, if you have, like I said, multiple and under new contract, you are doing five different pay groups, then you have to make sure if you only wanna pull in that one pay group, then you're gonna have to make sure you just deselect all these and pull them over and then select the ones that you only wanna pull in. But if you want to pull in everybody, you have that option to do that. So go ahead and run that. And as you can see, my new contract report now shows everybody. So again, this is just another triple check that they can do before they activate them to make sure that all that amount or everything is, is correct on their spreadsheet. Okay. 
So it'll be a good thing if they can utilize them, maybe save them a little headache in the end um, when they're starting to run pay and they notice things aren't right in the calculations. So they have all those three options that they can use to get their totals because um, the summary report and then the um, new contract pay account also has it subtotal by grand total. And again, like she said, you can run it by pay group if they add that, and then they can make sure if they have spreadsheets that are just by pay group, then they can make sure that the subtotal matches what they're saying. And they can make those corrections before they activate them um, into new compensation or into compensation, excuse me. Okay. Um, anything, questions on this part of it? Um, the next thing I wanted to show was the new um, non-contract compensations. Because you can go ahead and we do have options to change that. So you can do um, a mass load into a not for non-contracts into directly into compensations. It, you won't use new import for anything. This is a separate thing. And you can find that under our documentation. Find it. Where are you here? There we go. Well, I thought I had it. Yeah, there it is. Sorry, couldn't find it. So under in our documentation, we do have where you can create the non-contract compensations. And we have the available spreadsheet here that you can download and use that um, to update or pull in all your employees. And then you can, from there, um, remove employees that don't need to be on it or changed. So again, I already, you, um, excuse me, saved this to my desktop and brought it into my reports imported them in here. And then now I have my non-contract. So from here, um, it's gonna pull in all employees that are not archived. And again, if you wanna pull in certain pay groups, maybe you have certain pay groups for your non-contracts that are different. So that way you can you, um, don't have to pull in everybody. You can also do that here. It won't pull in everybody if you don't want. So again, the districts can change this and add different um, selections of their filters to make it easier on them on um, when they're bringing in these employees. So I'll go ahead and it's going to select everybody that is not archived into my spreadsheet. Okay, so here is my spreadsheet. And then what you can do is from here, you can go ahead and delete out employees that you no longer are wanting in here um, and delete them out if they didn't um, do that selection um, in, during the report process when, you, when they were creating them. Um, again, I just wanted to show you that using this, um, then they can use, um, update everything that they need to at this time and change those, um, change, uh, change their information over. And again, new contract. And then when they do import, um, they wanna use the mass load compensations. So, when, and if they have questions on those um, headers, they can go to the math or mass load documentation. And they can um, make sure that their headers or the headers and their what they input it is matching what their compensations here says. Okay. There we go. 
So once they have that information all updated here, what they need it to be, they got to remember to make sure again that they save it as a as CESV, excuse me. And then save that to where they need that to be. I already have one out there. Let's replace it. And then when they do, they would go to that mass load and make sure they choose compensations. Oops, oh, on my spreadsheet, yeah, there it is. And then they wanna make sure they use compensations. So again, they don't have to do the non-contract compensations by hand, by um, individual. If they do update those every um, update information, um, again, that non-contract compensation mass load feature is out there for them. Um, so they don't have to do it one by one. Um, under compensations. Okay. Um, the one other thing I wanted to show was they can find this information in our share reports library. And I believe if you go help and public share, it's right there. So it's under the help. I'll go right there. And then all these reports are out here um, in templates that they can use, utilize to help the districts um, when they're doing their um, fiscal year contracts. And if you go to fiscal year based reports, you're gonna see all these worksheets here. New contract compensation worksheet. We have a new contract payroll accounts and original pay accounts. So if they do change pay accounts, they can use this um, report to pull in and um, why, why they're still under new contracts and show what was the old and what is the new. And then also the non-contract mass load. So we also have those out here. So I just wanted to let you know that um, to use, utilize those with your districts. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions on the new contract stuff? Okay. Um, one other thing I was gonna just quick go over is our, the new option in new contract, the salary notices, which they're constantly working on updating and adding fields. So districts have all this, um, have more fields to pull in when they're doing their new contracts. And again, under new contracts, salary notices, um, we have documentation here um, in detail that will help when they are creating them. And also, if you're doing a customized salary notice, um, we have the option that you can do that here in the available fields for salary notices that are out there. And I know Michelle went over at the conference um, how to add these in, because it's kind of like a direct deposit when you're doing that, um, adding these uh, merge field names in, you have to add them by a certain way. Um, we also have, which they just added under our training, is a detail, if I can find it. ITC training, there we go. She just added it under today's, the salary notices, and it's a YouTube video, and it goes to, um, shows them directly how to create a custom, how to create a custom um, salary notice and how to add them. Um, so that was just added yesterday. So I just wanna let you know that that is out there um, under our training and register. Um, Registration. Where's where can that be found? That specifically, Andrea. I'm sorry, I'm looking and I'm not seeing the YouTube link for that. Um, if you go to your SSD trainings and meetings. Yep, I'm on that page. Yep. Okay, then ITC training and registration. Yep. And then go down here to the today's date. That will okay. Be it's under today's. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. So they, so um, I think that's going to be very helpful 
um, when you're trying to create custom um, salary notices for your districts on that. So if I'm just gonna like create a salary notice, I don't think, I do have a default one. So I have my default one. I have a salary notice for 2024 that you can select and that I'll select. And again, you can enter in your contract compensation. You can enter in your appointment types for employees to create. I'm just gonna select those, two, um, let's see. I think if I generate, let me see, I might select everybody. Yeah, it's like to everybody, sorry. Because I didn't, when I went in there, it didn't select like a contract start date for it to look. So if I have, I have multiple new contracts, people in there, um, you can pull in all the employees with a certain contract start date, or you can pull in all the employees that are certified or classified. Uh, Amy said, just know it would be nice if those drop downs aren't so close to the action buttons below them. You have to be pretty specific where you're clicking. Okay, are you talking here in salary notices? To the action button. I wasn't sure, are you talking about the salary notices, Amy? Yes, the from button has a drop down. Oh, gotcha, here. So you wanna you know, move this. So it's kind of not on top of each other, you're saying? Okay, gotcha. Okay, all right, thank you. I will make note of that and I can do a feedback issue. Just kind of change the way the screen looks so it's not on top of each other, okay. Andrea, I saw that the per pay period um, is now an available field, correct, on the salary notice? Um, Let's see, I know we had some coming up, I think, to Day we added some more actually. Is it in so, today's so. release? Okay. Yes. Yep. We released, uh, let's see. Let's do a release. I'll just check in here. I saw the document got updated because I was yep, kind of small for that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Paper period, pay plan, and hours and day were just added today in the new Sweet. release. All right. So with that, this is a wish list, and I don't know yep. who I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume everybody out there probably wants it to, but I'm just feeling that out. So okay. I love the fact that y'all have put those custom form templates out on the public shared wiki. There is one out there that says including all template. Yes. I assume once this release is done that that'll be updated as well. Yes. And I was, when I was just kind of going over my stuff today, and actually that was on one other thing I want to say, custom form templates. If you go to custom form templates, you're going to see all our um, default direct deposit templates, your salary notices, different direct deposit templates. I have W4, um, the new W4, and also the salary notices. So and I noticed that, and that was one thing I was going to mention. Um, I We haven't updated these templates to include. I don't think we have, because I think this was before this update, that that included all the templates. So yes, I will make sure that that is updated also. Hey, including. Andrea, when I was looking at this yesterday, I'm not sure if the um, it says default salary notice template. If you click on the click here example that's a direct deposit i don't know like is it matters or oh not, yep you're right it is <laughs> that since we were right. here yep let me let me mark that too well i appreciate you guys um letting us know because yeah when we're adding stuff sometimes things don't get uh in the right section so click here is wrong okay saying direct deposit Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we have not updated all these yet, I believe. So we'll go ahead and get those, make sure that those are all updated. Um, 
and brought in correctly. Okay. All right. All right. And if there's anything else you guys see that maybe is not updated, let us know. There's so many different places to update information. Sometimes it doesn't get all hit. Um, we try. Um, but again, um, if there's anything you want to kind of go over yet, um, we can do that. And again, if you have questions on the new, um, the new um, YouTube video that Lori and Michelle did yesterday, which we really appreciate, they worked on that most of the day, um, let us know. Um, you can send a ticket out or something and we can help you. Um, I think the most problem is, is getting these merge fields in correctly. I think that that's the biggie, is making sure they get these in um, incorrect when they're adding them. Okay. Any questions on this? Um, I think the only other thing I was going to mention is the emailing of the salary notices. I know we're working on trying to get some kind of a signature started, and I know you can copy and paste a signature um, in there. And I don't know if Michelle probably showed, showed that at the conference or the last week or two weeks ago when she was there, um, that we're still trying to get that something easier where they can sign that. I know that was something big that treasures are wanting. Okay. All right. Um, any questions on contract new compensations or non? If you want to go re go over something that I maybe I didn't go over very well or missed, I try to hit all the tops things that maybe the districts would need when doing new contracts. All right. Um, one, yes, one time go ahead. They were, sorry, honey. At one time they were talking about putting the EMIS year on the compensations, but um, I don't see that. And really, I don't, I'm not sure why that was even necessary um, because it was using the start and stop dates. Do you remember that discussion? On the salary notices or in the compensation nope. itself? On the compensations themselves. Remember there was discussion and maybe it was just with the steering committee and prioritization that they talked about putting the EMIS year on the compensation itself. It's not there and I don't want to open a wound if it's not necessary because I know it's still looking at the start and stop dates for pulling EMIS against the EMIS config and system. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything, correct? There is no EMIS year field on the new compensations, no. correct? Okay, cool. That's all I needed. Thank you. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, you're just saying here, not under new contracts. Co well, right. I'm seeing on compensations altogether. There was okay. That yeah, because that's on it. the position side of it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I have not heard that they were adding that or changing that. Um, but I can, I can see if there's a juror issue or feedback issue open for that. Heidi, I can see where it would help though, because, um, yes, the start date will keep the new compensation records from coming in, but because the, um, old compensation records, especially for groups like teachers and bus drivers that are stretch pay over the summer, their, um, compensation end date is after July 1 of the current year. So it's still picking those up in FY, it would pick those up in FY24 because the compensation end date is after July 1 of 23. But it won't pick them up when they have new contracts. So because those new contracts would have a different start um, date. Right, different start dates, right. It's looking, if I remember correctly, Andrea, it looks at the start date for this um, off of the compensations. And so that's why um, I think Andrea mentioned earlier, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that if you have folks that you're doing new contracts on that have a date of 6.30 or before, you might have to go unflag those when you bring them in so you're not double reporting those compensations. 
right. but anybody with the seven one or after it does not necessarily look at the compensation stop date, just the start date. But it is still pulling those in because I have a district that has last year's compensation records that are still marked as report to EMAS and it is still pulling those in. And what is their um, dates on, what's their start and stop dates on those? Uh, 8-1 to 7-31. Um, so they ended 7-31 um, of 23 and the new one started 8-1 of 23 or 22. Okay. I'm 7-31 of 22. The new one started 8-1 um, of 22 and both compensation records are being pulled in. Okay, so then, then in that scenario, this is probably where you're going to have to have those on. If they're going to activate those before the final L, then they're going to have to um, uncheck those report EMIS facts so they don't get pulled in. Because you're right, because at 731, it, it is it's still looking at those start and stop dates. Yeah, because I, I was under the impression it looked at both start and stop dates, just yeah. not just the start dates. And um, I, I know for a fact I have a district that all of their administrators I, are being reported with double compensation records. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and update. I'm going to update this here. This final elf new contracts have been activated. I will update that. So to just, just kind of mention that that if their stop date is still within that fiscal year, it's going to pull in. I'm going to do some research on that. Make sure we update that. Okay. All right. Good notes. Thank you. So we try to add as much as help as we can in this EMIS documentation, how things, how the collector pulls things in, because it, it's a lot. There's a lot that uh, the data collector um, looks at. And we try to document everything so it makes it easier for districts. So anything that you guys have helpful that you see on your district's end that they're seeing, definitely please let us know and we can add that so it, it gets caught. Because I don't see the data collector side of things. Um, we have Andy, which is really good. He can help us with that and he can run things through the data collector if we need to. So I appreciate your help on that. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else that you guys think of that we should go over? I try to hit all the public share reports and such. And then that salary notice, which is a big one. If you guys take a look at that today and let us know on, um, on that, that'd be great. And I think in Lori, I think Lori is actually updating this as we speak. So I'm wondering if she's starting to do that, updating these templates. So I think she's starting to work on that. She is, so she must be on here. So she <laughs> must be hearing me. So, yeah, so these are getting updated as we speak. So that should be good. <laughs> thank yes, you, Lori. Lori. Yeah, thank you, Lori. Okay. All right, anything else that we can wanna go over today? Um, I think the next time we meet is, um, let's see, ITC training. is April 28th, but that's for USAS, and that is for the review of transfer and advances option. And then we have our April release recap, which is on May 5th. And then we'll start getting into fiscal year end meetings. It's starting here in May. So, okay. Um, if we have no other questions, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, and we'll see you on the next Fiscal Fridays then. Have a Thank great you, day. Andrea. Thank you. Thank you.